Hi everyone, I'm Eunice Olsen and you're very welcome to another episode of Her Story on Women Talk Radio. Now today we have the privilege of meeting with Siti Rahayu. Rahayu is one of the co-founders of Buku Jalanan Chowkit, an organization in Malaysia which holds weekly classes for children in the Chowkit area. Now she's a strong believer in the power of education and she hopes to equip the kids in that area with the knowledge and skills to break out of the poverty cycle. This is her story. Listen, and you will hear stories of beauty, strength, and inspiration. Let's talk women talk. I wanted to say thank you so much for um, uh, being on the show and for telling us uh, your amazing story. Maybe you can tell me a little bit about um, why you started uh, Buku Jalanan. So- uh, we have a lot of buku jalanan actually. I see. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We have buku jalanan Shah Alam, buku jalanan Titi Wangsa, all the place and district in Malaysia. And then we have like buku jalanan Perth. Which, yeah. and, and, and it means mobile library, right? Yeah. Um, it is actually a movement by Malaysian students and Malaysian readers actually. Buku jalanan Chakit is slightly different because we choose to work with children. And children from a specific demographic background, yes, right? In 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 Chalkit, uh community, but um, the demography there is quite special in a way that even though it's a business center, not everybody's rich. There's a lot of urban poor living in the area. Um, crime rates are very high. There's prostitutions. There's um, drug addictions everywhere. Among us are those people who join soup kitchen. So from the soup kitchen, we figure out that there's a lot of children playing around jacket area. People always get it wrong. Right. So I, my children play along the street of Chalkit. So people consider them as street children. But then, right, Chalkit is like a kampung. Yeah, what happened is that they went out on the street and played. So people mistaken them from for homeless children. But then they are very much vulnerable. Mm. To all the surrounding, to the environment around there. But I guess their 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 parents are also, I mean, very very busy working, and so I guess there's no guidance and there's no uh, direction for them as well. And the parents also are struggling, right? Um, I can't find the idiom in in English, but then in Bahasa, right? There's one idiom called kais pagi makan pagi, kais petang makan petang, meaning to say whatever that you get in the morning uh. is for you to eat in the morning. Whatever that you get in the evening is what for you to eat in the evening. I see. That's their life. You so know, it's like is- just living day by day. Yeah. I mean, I know you're a firm believer that education is a. Uh, pretty much a leveling tool and I think I share with you the same uh, idea and um, but what made you say let's start like almost like a formal program for these for these kids oh by professions and I'm, I'm a teacher by profession oh yes in the university right yeah in the university me myself I'm from a small kampung and I think my life changed because of education and in my team we have like 12 of us all of us is not rich so, in, uh, on our part, we have nothing to give, we have nothing to help, mm-hmm. except for sharing the knowledge that we have. But that, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's so powerful though, that you are giving, I mean, so many people have education, it doesn't mean that they give that gift to others, you know. So, I, I think the work is amazing. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the programs that you run for the children because I know it's not just like you know kind of teaching them like uh, formal kind of subjects but there's a lot of values that you inculcate in them as well so tell us about the programs that you have for the children in, uh, the, the, in Chowkit it will be quite hard for us if we want to go in and then say okay let us drill you with the tuition classes to ready you for the exam because that's not a purpose it is to ready them to face the world what we do is that still still we teach them English and we teach them mathematics. And then um, in formal education, through that, they would learn to talk to people, they would learn to socialize. I think that is education as well. Yes, absolutely. And all of our volunteer actually is from the university. It is university students. We want them to mingle with a different set of people. So from them, they, they would get a new understanding of how the world works. Another subject I think that we bring into them is a subject called love. 
and I show it to them that how much I love them. Mm. And yeah, we. I think the children's basic. I think basic things that children need is someone to call them, someone mm. to show them love. They never feel any bad. They never. They in the beginning, yes. Cikgu bodoh, cikgu gila, things are like that, you know. And now, right, when 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 they show me and you know, any other teachers, right, they will come and embrace us. Oh wow! Yeah. And you said that you guys are renovating. Is this a? Yeah. You do you get a place near in the in the Chowkit area? Yeah, it's in the Chowkit area. We want to create a safe space for children of Chowkit. Mm. A safe space, a sanctuary for them, you know. So when they went back from. School, they can go there. Like a hangout place, right, for them? Yeah, the hangout place for them. Now it's great to hear about the absolutely amazing work that Rahayu is doing in providing a safe space for the kids in Chow Kit to learn more about the world. Now we're going to hear more about her views on how education can be used to empower the marginalized children in our society after this very short break. Welcome back, everyone, to her story. Now we are talking to Siti Rahayu, one of the co-founders of Buku Jalanan Chowkit in Malaysia. Now I asked her more about the stateless school she has set up for undocumented children living in the Chowkit district, and this is what she told me. Earlier this year, we we figured out that all of the eight children are Indonesian. Ah, okay. Yeah, uh, by parentage they're Indonesian, but they are born in Malaysia. They have Malaysian birth certificates, but it is written there, non-citizen. I don't know in Singapore, but in Malaysia, right, children without documents are not eligible to attend any government school. So what happened is that we went, we went to one of these um, private schools in Malaysia. It's Indonesian private school in Malaysia. So we asked them that uh, we we asked to enroll our children there. Mm. They don't want to accept our children. Oh. So so these children were not accepted to to the school. So we, we was like, okay, never mind, you don't want to accept our children, we open the school for our children. This is why we are bringing education to our children in Jockey. We just want to stop the cycle of exploitation, the cycle of oppression that they are living in. We don't want them to go out from Jockey. I don't want to be brought up from Malaysia because this is my land, this is where I live. Tell us a little bit about... um. You know, maybe what are some of the challenges you're facing? And if anybody, like if, you know, if people were to hear this interview, what are some of the things that they can possibly help you with? It's, it's the time of the volunteer. It's the time of the team members. Mm. That's that's one of the things. Um, because everybody's working. Yeah. Everybody is managing their own life as well. But thankfully, we we are there on the right track. And then um, things that even even some Malaysians didn't know this kind of life existed because we don't really talk about all of this. We want people with skill, with expertise to come down and help the children. Um, you know, it wouldn't take a long time for you to to be able to inspire the children. To all Malaysians and to everybody who is listening to this, right? Our life is actually is not our life. It is something that is given to us. Mm. To be used responsibly for others. Responsibly for others. Yeah. So mm. give back because once you give back, there will always something good coming back to you in return. And I do believe that every children deserve the best in life. Every children, every children deserve the best in life. Is there anything else you want to say to anyone about? whether it's the kids in Chow Kit or the Chow Kit area in general, or about how people can, you know, maybe help to empower this, uh, uh, this community better. People always say that children are the future. Children are the future. But, uh, but are we really doing the right things for our children? Mm. Do we choose and pick which children to be treated like this, which children to not be treated like this? Do we pick and choose these children uh, are supposed to get education. These children are not supposed to get education or not. Did we do justice to all of the children? Yeah, why don't we start today to be that pulling factor, the 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 force the, of good. The force of good to the children. Any children, we are the one. Mm. I think it's about time that us everyone is just in this world uh work hand in hand um in advocating that 
every children deserve the right to education. So how to start is that start treating the unnoticed, the un and the invisible, the marginalized children equally. Give them the opportunity to to start their own life because they are children. They need to be able to get a stepping stone for them to launch into something good. I think so. What are your hopes and dreams for the children that you reach out to in Buku Jalanan? Whether it's the stateless school or whether it's the program that you run every Sunday night? I, I just want their life to be better. That's that. And I, I don't want to define um, what's better for them. I just don't want to define life for them. I, I think, yeah, the whole thing for Buku Jalanan Chakit is that you want to be in the environment with them so that they can dream, they can decide, they can plan their life. Uh, we we want to inspire them to reach that stage. And not detecting them, not telling them this is the this is the meaning of what is better. I want my children one day to be able to be proud to tell everyone that you know that is the community that I grew up in and I still live there. But then I am the person who contributes towards the betterment of people around Chalky. I am the person who transformed Chalky. Rahat you we ask this question to all the women who come on the show. Uh, is the one question that we feel binds us all. Um, so the question is, what is empowerment to you? Empowering is enabling the person to to launch themselves into a better place. Empowering is that you are giving them voice, you are giving them space, you are giving them the will to launch themselves, to launch themselves into a better place, into a better them, not imposing not trying to change um, who they are based on what you believe is better for them, but enabling them to think what is good for them. Mm. Enabling them to make their own decision on what is best for them. Amazing. I mean, you are so passionate and so sincere and so genuine. I mean, it's been such an absolute pleasure speaking to you, Rahayu. You know, I believe that, you know, one day the kids will definitely, with your guidance and your direction, make a huge impact in their own communities or maybe communities outside of theirs as well. Yeah, pray for my children. (laughs) We will, we will, definitely. Now, Rahayu's work really strikes a chord with me and it's very inspiring to hear about her dedication to the cause and her love for the children and the child kid and it really, really warms my heart to uh, do this interview with her. Anyway, to find out more about Buku Jalanan Chow Kit and how you can help Rahayu and her amazing team, uh, you can visit their Facebook page. Uh, just search for Buku Jalanan Chow Kit, which is B-U-K-U-J-A-L-A-N-A-N Chow Kit. That's C-H-O-W-K-I-T. And you can find out more information about them. Also, if you want to check out a version of our podcast with subtitles, just in case uh, some of the words there weren't clear, if you couldn't really hear them, you can log on to our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com slash TV for a video and you can see that video with subtitles as well. Do subscribe also to our podcast to hear more about stories of the unsung heroines around all of us. Thank you so much everyone for staying here with us on Women Talk Radio. This is Eunice Olsen and I will see you